Dr. Justin Skrinsky here today talking about antibodies and vaccines. If you find these videos useful, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel to receive further updates directly. So today we're talking about antibodies. What are antibodies? In this case, they're these little compounds that your body makes to fight infection. Antibodies aren't the only way to fight infection. We also have a variety of other things such as neutrophils and natural killer cells. Now, important to know, antibodies are not like bullets in the sense that you can't just fire the same ones at any old germ. Each antibody is specific for a certain part of the germ that you're fighting. These are called antigens, and antibodies and antigens fit together sort of like a lock and key. If you've ever seen a movie where someone gives a dog something to smell so they can track a fugitive, it's kind of the same thing. The dog isn't out there just looking for criminals, it's tracking a specific scent associated with that person. Get him, boy! If you're successful, then the antibody hones in on its target and hopefully neutralizes it. But what happens if the criminal changes jackets? Now you have a different lock and the key no longer fits. This is actually something that influenza does, something called antigen drift, and it's the reason why you need a new flu shot every year, which I'm sure you all get, right? Sometimes antibodies can even be formed against your own tissues and cells, and that's something we call an autoimmune disease, like lupus or celiac disease. Antibodies are even involved in allergies. And, as an aside, with peak allergy season coming, it's easy to confuse the symptoms of seasonal allergies with those of coronavirus. Looking specifically at you, Mr. Johnson. When we make a vaccine, we introduce or inoculate a little piece of whatever we're trying to protect against into the body. That way your immune system is primed and ready to recognize and attack that germ if it ever comes into contact with it. Sort of like understanding the lock and making a key in advance for it. In the case of COVID-19, our understanding of the tests for these antibodies, call it serology so you sound smart, is still very early on. As a physician, I know that the results of a test are rarely so simple as yes or no. And in this case, let's quickly find out why. If someone tests positive for antibodies to this coronavirus, it's reasonable to believe that they've been exposed to this virus. There are some reports of false positives and that further complicates the picture. But even if we trust the results of a positive test, several questions remain foremost do these antibodies actually protect against future coronavirus infections? There are documented cases now of what appears to be either relapse or reinfection, but much, much more research is needed to clarify this. As for now, past exposure and even positive antibodies aren't a guarantee of protection. We also have no idea if these antibodies are permanent. This is why some experts think that quarantine and social distancing need to go on much longer than originally anticipated. Now for the negatives. There are a few different possibilities if someone tests negative for COVID-19 antibodies. First, that person may simply have not been exposed to the virus, but unfortunately it's not so simple. Second, the test may not be sensitive enough and there may be some false negatives. Third, it might be too early on to see antibodies. Depending on the type of antibody, some studies have shown that it takes up to a couple weeks for these to be detectable. Finally, and most problematically, it may be that not everyone who's exposed to this coronavirus ends up developing antibodies. If this is the case, then serology would not be a reliable way to determine who has and who has not had the virus. Even with the pressure to reopen the country, knowing what you do now, you can see that serology is not the magic bullet for ending quarantine. Testing serology is not just about clearing people to go back to work. This is far from a completed science, and a huge part of the mass testing that's likely to happen will be to answer the questions that we just talked about. Even if we can make a vaccine that reliably causes people to generate antibodies to this virus, and even if we can reliably test for whether or not somebody has antibodies from a previous exposure, we're simply not sure if that means these people are actually immune. Hopefully, as we understand serology better and come up with increasingly rapid and reliable ways to test for antibodies, as well as the virus itself, we'll be able to devise a strategy to safely remove all the social and mobility restrictions that are keeping the virus at bay. Remember, even though COVID-19 fatalities in the U.S. right now may appear no worse than a bad influenza season. That's because of extreme measures on a national scale. Ending quarantine and social isolation too soon may be like cutting away a parachute midair simply because you're falling slower. And the results may be equally disastrous. But until then, my barber clippers finally arrived. So wish me luck.